Okay, welcome to part one of installing the cheapest airbags I can onto my Mercedes W126. I'm gonna try to skip over the boring stuff and make this as information packed as possible. Some of it will be W126 specific, but I wanna make most of it just helpful for anyone that's trying to put airbags on their car. So far, I'm about $600 into it. If you wanna watch my price breakdown slash unboxing video, uh, I got a link for that in the description. That video also has all the eBay slash Amazon links uh, as well if you're interested in purchasing any of the components. Okay, so making these cups that go on either end of the airbag is going to be the hardest part. Uh, if you have a car with a very tight space, you're going to have to angle at least one of the cups. Now on this one, the top cup is straight. Uh, that's easy enough to make. Just cut and weld. Uh, and this one, it's at like... I want to say a 10 or a 15 degree angle. I forgot what I measured it to. And yes, it would be a lot nicer if that top one could be straight. But what you're not seeing is when it's on the car, these two are straight together. This just has to be angled because of the way the lower control arm sits. Just be prepared to do a lot of test fitting. On my car, you can see this is where that bottom cup would be. And then the top cup sits in there and it's very close no clearance to this frame rail and there's really no clearance to this front shock but for now let's go and look at the rear of the car because the rear of this car was actually super challenging okay so now we're looking at the rear suspension and as you can see there is not a ton of room the bag actually sits behind this so there's your lower cup, would sit right in that little area, right there. And I can't even really show you, oh, there's the upper one. Right where that hole is drilled, that's where my upper bag mount sits inside of. And uh, the only real clearance issue here, I had to take the bump stop off, but this tab is where the bump stop mounts to, and the bag is very, very close to that bump stop. So I'm actually considering just cutting that off because it looks like I could just take a sawzall and just cut it right off. And I might do that. But the only reason I don't want to is because I have tested the rear with the car on the ground fully up and down. And as of right now, the bags don't hit that bump stop. If you have your bags rubbing against any part of any uh, suspension component, they're gonna pop. They're not really thick. They do make like double wrapped ones that are, are a lot more durable. But even then, you're supposed to have clearance on all sides. They can't be rubbing on stuff. They'll pop real fast. And I'm talking like real fast. There's been people that have gone like 10 miles and their bag has popped because of improper installation. So I might cut that off just to be safe. Or I might just try to get in there with a sledgehammer and bash it a little bit. All right guys, so I'm editing this video right now and I realized I missed two important things that I really wanted to talk about and for some reason when I was filming I just glossed over them. And one is how I decided the angle for the cups and the second thing is what tools I actually used for this whole job. So I'm just gonna get the tools out of the way right now and one thing you're definitely gonna want is this. This is a chop saw, a 14 inch blade, it, you need it to cut this. Uh, you could cut this with an angle grinder if you are really determined, but I'm telling you right now, it's worth the money to have this. It makes it go so much faster. And being able to select the angle and then keep that angle is really relevant because what you're gonna wanna do is make a cup for one side and then be able to mirror it for the other side. So. Having an actual gauge on here and being able to quickly change angles, very relevant for this job. Couldn't have done it without this tool. Well, I could have, but it would have taken twice as long. Uh, and then the second thing I used was this disc sander. This is just great for like deburring, uh, cleaning up metal before welding. It takes down metal really fast. Uh, if I cut something on here and it's slightly off, I could come over here and just grind it a little bit and you know, it would take it right down. This thing saved me a ton of time. 
I did kind of gloss over the powder coating, but this is just the Harbor Freight powder coating system um, directly out of the box. Worked just fine. Uh, if you saw my video, I built this homemade booth that sucks all the dust in and filters it out. This thing worked amazing. Uh, kept the shop nice and clean. I also made a little homemade uh, dust collector here. It's basically just a shop vac plugs into it and then I used an old Electrolux vacuum hose with the horse hair brush. Um, and yeah, all the dust just gets trapped in the bucket and doesn't make it to the vacuum, which is safer because if it reaches the motor of the vacuum, it can cause a fire. And then this is a really nice KitchenAid toaster oven that I got for $20 at Goodwill, which is a steal because these things are super expensive. Like this is a nice toaster oven, uh, works perfectly, uh, came with racks that I've been using for coating. You can see there's a little metallic gold left on this one. Yeah, it worked great. Got nothing but great things to say about this whole little powder coating setup. Okay, before I talk about how I made my cups and how I measured for them, I'd like to preface by saying I'm not an expert. This is my first time airbagging any type of vehicle and really my first time doing any sort of custom suspension work. This is just the way I did it. It made sense in my brain and it happened to work out really good for me. So, I'm gonna use these blocks of wood. This is the frame of the car. This is gonna be the control arm. You know, you got your frame, your control arm, goes up and down like that. Okay, so logically in my head, the frame should almost always just stay level and the control arm is the thing that moves. So what I did is I set the car to where ride height would be and we're just gonna call it like right there. And then I made a longer top cup. That'll be the top cup and it's long and it's straight. There's no angle on that. And for both the front and the back, what I did is I had it set at ride height, and then I took the bottom cup, which I made shorter, and I cut it at that angle, okay? So if the bottom cup has that angle on it of the control arm, then when you're at ride height, the top two will be level, and that's just what made sense to me because in my car, I'm not bottoming out when the bags are collapsed, I'm bottoming out when the car hits the ground. So I don't have to worry about the bags being level when the car is on the ground. I just want them to be level where they spend the most time, which is gonna be ride height. Now this wasn't the last step though. I cut the angle here and you notice I made the top cup extra long. So what I did is with the top cup extra long, I could set the car down and see where, like, or not set the car down. I could jack the control arm up and see where the bag would bottom out and where the car would bottom out. And then I just cut down the top cup as I went until I got to a place where I was happy, where it was at ride height and it had enough travel to go down without bottoming out the bag and enough travel to go up to get to a height that was satisfactory to me. So basically, I made this top cup adjustable in a way to where I made it way too long and then I just cut it down until I found where I had the perfect amount of travel and the perfect amount of lowness, I guess, to where I could bottom the car out without fully collapsing the bag and putting stress on the bag. And that's, that's just how I did it. So on my front and rear, both the bottom cups are angled to match the control arm at ride height and then the top cup was just made long and then cut down to where I had the correct amount of travel. And I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it made sense to me, and that's just how I decided to do it. And like I said, I've never done this before. Uh, I didn't even like watch any videos on how to make these cups. I just got the cup kit and I started cutting stuff up and, and doing it. So. This could be 100% wrong, but it's what's working for me, and, and I did it myself, so that's all I can say. Okay, this is the final install of the rear bags. You can see that upper one and how I bolted it in. 
Then the lower one. Uh, of course, I'm using blue thread locker on everything because I don't want this to come apart, but I want to be able to take it apart if I need to. And I think this is how you know if you did it right. There's my bottom cup, and I'm going to jack up the control arm, and look how perfectly this meets it. There, it's sitting on it right now. That is, without a doubt, the most perfect fit. Like, this is probably around ride height, and both the bottom and the top cups are perfectly level. It just looks so good. All right, guys, I just wanted to show you how I mounted the top of these bags. Now, I could have been fancy and like welded a plate in here for this to bolt to, but instead, I just used this piece of square tubing. Uh, it just bridges across here, and when it's tightened down, it can't really go anywhere. Uh, what's nice about it, as opposed to the plate, is that I can loosen this up, and then I can kind of like move the top cup around. That just lets me position it in a way where it's not going to rub, because it is really tight in here. Uh, it's really close to the shock, and if it's really close to the shock, it's far away from the back. But if it's close to the back, then it gets far away from this. So there, it's just like finding a middle ground. Uh, so I like to have that adjustability on the top. The bottom one's bolted in, it can't really move at all. Okay, I've got a jack under my rotor, and I'm gonna show you the full range of motion of this bag. I can go a little farther. That's pretty much as low as the car will go. If you look, our bolts are actually way up. This would probably lay the front of the car on the ground. And we'll go down. So as you saw, that's a ton of travel up and down. I'd like to show you the same view from the back, but it actually, uh, you, you just can't see anything once the car starts to lower because there's just so much stuff in the way. This is it actually sitting pretty low right now. It's not all the way down. Uh, it's actually being stopped by the exhaust. It's actually laying on the exhaust. Without that exhaust there, I could actually get this to tuck more. Right now it's like even. But yeah, if that exhaust wasn't there, or if the front of the car was lower, because then the exhaust would be off the ground, I could actually get it to tuck rim. Still has quite a bit of travel at this point. So once we get the front on the ground, you'll be able to see that this car will actually lay itself on the ground. All right guys, that's gonna do it for part one. I just wanted to go over some of the hurdles of making the cups and uh, show you what it looks like with all the cups bolted in, give you a little look into how I checked for clearance and showed it going up and down and all that. Uh, one thing that is not done yet is I have not relocated my rear shocks. Right now there's no rear shocks on the car. It's super dangerous, I don't recommend it. Um, I'm gonna be making my own custom shock mounts. I just really wanted to finish the bag install first. So it'll probably be like part two, we'll show you the car going up and down and everything. And then part three, I'll relocate the rear shocks and we can actually take it for like a nice drive. But once again, thanks for watching. If you like stuff like this, be sure to subscribe. And that's about it. I really cannot wait to get this thing on the road.